Right, leaving certs. Here we are, the last of the electricity experiments to investigate the variation of current with voltage for a copper sulfate solution with copper electrodes. And some of you are probably looking at me and saying, copper sulfate solution, that sounds suspiciously like chemistry. And yes, it is. So a little bit of background for the people that don't know much chemistry like myself. Well, first thing, copper sulfate solution. Copper sulfate is a chemical. It's often written as the chemical formula CuSO4. Now, copper sulfate solution, when you dissolve it in water, it's called a copper sulfate solution. And copper sulfate solution is a class of chemical called an electrolyte. And what is, you ask, an electrolyte? Well, in its basic form, an electrolyte is a liquid that conducts electricity. A liquid that conducts electricity. And everyone that studies chemistry is now shouting at me saying, no, that is not exactly what an electrolyte is. So, they're actually correct. It, electrolyte is a liquid that conducts electricity using a chemical reaction. So that's a better way of saying what an electrolyte is. It's a liquid that conducts electricity and there's a chemical reaction going on in that liquid at the same time. Mercury, for example, is a liquid. It will conduct electricity, but not with a chemical reaction. Okay, electrolyte. Now, maybe it would be a good idea to see how an electrolyte conducts electricity. We'll just give an example. E.g. CuSO. CuSO4 is our favorite electrolyte. That's the copper sulfate. Okay, let's have a quick look at this guy here. Let's have a quick look at this guy. Here is a beaker container, and we're going to fill it to the brim with our copper sulfate. And we're going to try to pass electricity through it. So if you want to pass electricity through it, well, the easiest way is have some metals, some copper, that will bring the electricity in and take the electric current out of the electrolyte. These metal rods, metal wires, metal plates are known as electrodes. And we're going to connect them up to a battery. Because the battery, and be careful how you draw it, is the source of voltage which pushes an electric current through the electrolyte. We're going to label a few things there. Battery, will this time go 12 volts. Now, this is the plus of the battery, this is the minus of the battery. So this metal plate here is given a special name. It's connected to the plus of the battery. It's called a electrode. It is the positive electrode. It's connected to the plus of the battery, but it's given another name. Anode. So we're going to call that from now on an anode. This electrode over here is the negative. It's connected to the minus of the battery and its special name is. These are very, very old names. Go back to the 18th, maybe even the 17th century. No, not 17th, probably 18th century. Okay, this liquid here is our electrode, electrolyte. And that is our Cu. SO4, our copper sulfate. <coughs> now, let's have a look here. When we put the copper sulfate in, the copper sulfate molecule, does CuSO4, just sits there looking like that for a while. But then a very funny thing happens, and I apologize to anyone that really understands chemistry, I'm oversimplifying this. The copper sulfate molecule breaks up. In chemistry, I think that's known as disassociation. It breaks up. It breaks up into Cu and SO4. But they don't break up equally. 
Why do chemicals stick together in the first place? It's something to do with sharing or swapping electrons. And when they divorce, when they break up, when the copper sulfate molecule breaks up, when it goes into a liquid, the electrons don't get shared equally. Now, copper, as far as I can remember, has 29 electrons, 27 in inner shells, 2 in the outer shell. So those two outer shell electrons that the copper had are stolen by this SO4 over there. So these guys, they steal the two electrons in the outer shell of the copper. They run away with them. The copper then is left with only 27 electrons. It had 29, but it's got 29 protons below, so it becomes doubly positive. All you got to know, if you really need to know this, is that when you put copper sulfate into water, when you make it a copper sulfate solution, the Cu and the SO4 split up and the Cu, the copper, becomes positive and the SO4, which we'll never talk about again, becomes negative. This no longer is really called a copper atom. It's a copper atom that has lost two of its electrons. So it's known as a, a copper ion. Now, let's see what that copper ion will do. That copper ion is positive. It's doubly positive. It's charged positive. So it will look around. It will say, hmm, this electrode here is the anode. The anode is positive. And they will repel. The positive will repel the positive. And it will notice the negative electrode over here, which is called the cathode. And it will be attracted so the copper ion will be attracted over towards the cathode. And the plus of the copper ion and the minus of the cathode will attract and that copper atom, sorry, that copper ion will plate, stick to the cathode. And the cathode over time will get fatter. It will get, become plated with these copper ions which stick to it, so the cathode will gain mass. It will get bigger, it has got copper atoms sticking onto it. Now I'm not going to go into the complex chemistry, but the anode will actually start wearing away because copper atoms will come off the anode to replace the copper ions which have stuck to the cathode. You don't have to understand all that. Well, what you have to understand, let's be clear, you have to understand that the metal plate connected to the plus of a battery is called a anode. And the metal plate connected to the minus of a battery is called a cathode. You've got to know that much. You've also got to know that when this chemical reaction happens, the cathode gains mass. The copper ions plate onto it. The, ca the, the cathode gains mass. And on the other side, the anode loses mass. That's all you got to know about the chemistry of this situation. Okay. Copper sulfate into water breaks up. The copper ions plate onto the cathode, the negative terminal. That gains mass. The anode over there the positive terminal loses mass as copper comes back into the solution to replace the copper ions that have plated on there. Okay, not too bad so far. Okay, well, we're whatever number of minutes in, what do you have to learn? Well, this is what I ask you to learn. I want you to learn what is the definition of electrolyte, a liquid that conducts a current or electricity using a chemical reaction. Copper sulfate, salt in water. Table salt, sodium chloride, is an electrolyte. What's an ion? It's a charged atom. An atom that's either gained or lost electrons in a chemical reaction. What's an anode? It's the positive electrode. What's the cathode? It's the negative electrode. Anode is always connected to the plus of a battery. Cathode is always connected to the minus of a battery. If you're really good at chemistry and know something about crows, forget about that. Well, don't forget about it, but in simplest terms, this will, this will do us. Okay, now we're going to turn the page and we're going to actually look at the experiment. The experiment to verify the, vo 
to investigate the voltage current relationship for a copper sulfate solution with copper electrodes. Okay, and you see we've got the exact same diagram as before. We've got our battery, I should have labeled this earlier. We've got our, our rheostat to vary the voltage. We've got our ammeter to measure the current. But you're saying to me, hang on, there's something missing there. What is missing, of clearly, is the copper sulfate solution and the voltmeter. So I'm just going to draw the copper sulfate solution here, trying to use the exact same diagram as before up there, and we're going to put the copper sulfate solution there, and we're going to be really cool. We're going to do it in blue because copper sulfate is blue. And here we're going to put our two electrodes. Now, what we're going to do is connect one electrode there and one electrode there. Now, here is the plus of the battery, there's the minus. That rail is often called the plus rail, that rail across there is often called the minus. So, minus this one here, I didn't expect this, this here is the minus, so what do we call that electrode? What do we call that electrode? We call that electrode the, oh that's worse, we call that electrode the cathode. It's the negative electrode, we call it the cathode. This one here is the positive electrode, so we call that the, the anode. This here is our C-O-P-P-E-R-S-U-L-F-A-T-E, -P -P -E I hate that spelling, copper sulfate, C-U-S-O-4, and it's a solution. Okay, solution means it dissolves in water. Now, you're still saying, hang on, hang on, electric current can go through the copper sulfate, it can come around here, the electric current can go that way, but we've no way of measuring the voltage between the ends of the copper sulfate. That's quite easy. Between the ends of the copper sulfate, I'm going to put in the world's smallest voltmeter. And there we've got our voltmeter between the ends of the copper sulfate in um, parallel with the copper sulfate. Remember, we always had the voltmeter between the ends of the metallic conductor, between the ends of the filament bulb, between the ends of the semiconductor diode. Now it's between the ends of the copper sulfate solution. That's our diagram. Perfect. Nothing wrong with it. Anything missing? No. Quick check. Okay. Let's see. What do you actually do in the experiment? Well, in the experiment, you measure the voltage between the ends of the copper sulfate with the voltmeter. You measure the corresponding current with the ammeter. And the Bit that people forget, you increase the voltage and get six or seven corresponding values of each. What do you do with those values? You plot a graph. Let's look at the graph. Well, the graph will be voltage against current, and you notice we're back putting voltage on the uh, y axis, current on the x axis. That will make life easier for you shortly. We always label our axis with the appropriate units. And when you plot this, the points that you get will give the shape of a straight line through the origin. And we're back on very familiar ground here because we know all about straight line graphs through the origin. What can you say about that graph? What can you say about that graph? That graph is a straight line through the origin. So let's look here at this. Let's look here at this. We just do it this way, bang, put this guy down there so you can actually see it. What can we say? We can say the graph is a straight line through the origin. What does that prove? This proves that voltage and current are directly proportional. Voltage, V, if you want to do it that way, current, I, they're directly proportional. And what can we say about the graph? Well, it means that, a, that this guy here will obey Ohm's law. It'll obey Ohm's law because voltage and current are directly proportional. Okay, what can we say about our graph though? Let's look at the graph. Well, the first thing you always do with a straight line graph is you talk about its, its slope. And the slope of any graph is what's on the y-axis over what's on the x-axis. It's an average. So let's look at this graph. What's on the y-axis? Voltage. What's on the x-axis? Current. And you don't have to be a genius to work out what voltage divided by current is. It's on page uh, 6971. I can't, can't remember which one of the match tables. Voltage divided by current is the resistance. So the slope of this graph will be the resistance 
of the copper sulfate solution because liquids have a resistance just like solids like waters have a resistance so you could well be asked draw that graph then pick two points well obviously you say it's a straight line to the argon voltage directly over the current ohm's law obeyed and pick two points and using those two points using our old friend the formula slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find the slope of the graph and what will the slope of the graph represent it will represent the resistance of the electrolyte okay uh, what else would you want to do there what else would you want to do there obviously when you're getting the slope two points not not is a beautiful point and some other point up up there Call this one x1, y1, call this one x2, y2, and show that in your graph. Then plug that in. You can do that on the graph paper to get its slope. Okay, what about a few precautions to make the result more accurate? Well, I can only think of a couple here. Clean the anode so copper will stick to it. That's one good one. Now, this is a kind of a poor one, but it will work. Use a digital voltmeter and a digital ammeter. I mean, who really doesn't these days? Use a digital voltmeter and digital ammeter as they measure to more places of decimal. They're more sensitive instruments. I have in the past used analog voltmeters. They have the needle that moves. Okay, they're not as sensitive as the digital ones. Don't confuse sensitivity with accuracy. Sensitivity is how many places of decimal. Digital um, instruments go to more places of decimal. Okay. Remember, what actually throughout the experiment will happen at the cathode? What did we say would happen at the cathode? What will happen at the cathode in this experiment? The cathode will become plated with copper. Can you remember why? Well, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to know. You do for chemistry, not for physics. But the cathode will become plated with the copper. The copper ions will stick to it. Okay? What will happen at the anode? The anode will become... And so what, what, what do I say about the cathode? It gains mass because copper ions stick to it. It gains mass because copper atoms stick to it. What happens to the anode? It gets worn away. It loses mass because it's losing copper atoms to replace the ones that stuck over there. Okay, we'll leave it there. 17 minutes, didn't expect that. Take care.